Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for Thursday, November the 17th, 2016. Today is a very special day because today is my mother's birthday who passed away back in 2012, October. So today is a very special day as I remember my beautiful mother. All right, moving forward, looking at what happened in the markets lately, we see the carnage continuing in the precious metal space as the junior miners are getting tarnished along with gold prices. This is, as you know, because central banks are getting kind of desperate and they're trying to prop up the stock market along with the US dollar which we will also take a look at <clears throat> excuse me it should also be noted as one of our uh, trading room members pointed out the uh, the discontinuance of ticker symbols UWTI and DWTI the 3x uh, crude oil e uh, ECNs and it's interesting because those you know those those shares are pretty up there I mean they're they're averaging pretty good volume I don't understand why they're discontinuing it but you know ETFs ECNs they these things get you know this happens all the time there have been so many that have been discontinued it's not even funny uh, so whatever who cares you know there are other vehicles and instruments to trade so we just keep it moving uh, probably look more toward as far as leverage instruments go you still have dig and dug and you know so it doesn't matter but anyway looking at a chart of JDST you can see that this one caught a nice bid today uh, popping up on, on on behalf of the weakness of gold prices and the junior miners uh, prices in particular the GDXJ uh, as you can see this is a we're trading above the Kumo cloud now you can see that um, it's making another run at this high of 4601 so it did hit today we hit forty dollars and sixty cents for a high so it's trying to make a run for that I think we may see uh, at least another day or two as the market gets up here to see if it's gonna punch through that or is it going to kinda double top and come back down again so it's a good guess as to which way it's going to go I say that the momentum is there and it should be enough to continue to carry this as um, gold prices continue to uh, get get hammered and the miners shares are suffering the same alright here you're looking at the continued weakness of JNUG every rally being sold here and uh, you know this is no different it had a hard time getting up toward that resistance, that 872 resistance, and it just couldn't hold it. We retested. We got as high as 840 before coming down today to $6.50. So at this rate, I mean, JNUG is going the way of the TVIX, you know. I remember when it got down there to, to basically, uh, you know, pennies, and then they did their, uh, their split and brought it back up again. So... This could split soon too. I mean, at this rate, uh, you know, how much lower can it go? Can it go to 50 cents? Someone in the trading room believes that Jay Nug is on his way to 50 cents. I have no idea. Uh, we trade what we see. We're not married to anything. This is why it's so important to hedge your portfolio. You need to do that. When you see the central banks coming in and smashing down the gold prices, you have to be defensive. And the only way to do that is to get in here and get along uh, the JDST all right so when we see the interest going up you can get along the the JNUG but when you see them smashing the metal you have to get along uh, the JDST let's take a look also at what's happening with the nugget all right here you go you can see here uh, what's happening with these miners you see it's still coming down here so if I can make that a little bit bigger okay so the rally being sold um, we may have another day or two of this coming down to this support 
is what's being tested. Got as low as seven dollars and thirty-one cents, and today we saw a low of eight fourteen. So, you know, not too far away. It could easily crack through that. It just depends on what's going to happen tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is Friday. What do we call Friday? Take Back Friday. So we need to look and see if the precious metals are going to get a bounce along with these miners. These mining shares are not hard to say, but take a look at dust. It's trying to make a run at the highest too. 6771, I'm sorry, 6271 was the high made back on November the 14th. It's come off since then and now it's trying to spike back up there. We hit 5514 today in dust. So right now current support on the dust is at $44.40 and 41.49 trend line support. Uh, it's above the Kumo cloud and it's looking good like it wants to continue to run. It's tough to say tomorrow is Friday, like I said. Take back Friday, anything can happen. Usually when the markets have been down or suppressed all week, they try to get a, get a bid in there on Friday as people are profit taking ahead of the weekend. And likewise, vice versa, if the market's been up all week, then you'll see profit taking, so you'll see prices come off as people take money off the table ahead of the weekend. People like to party on the weekend, so that's usually how that, that works. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on in your other markets. Uh, let's pull up the dollar real quick. All right. They have been very successful lately in their dollar operations. We had 10101, all right, and the dollar today. 10101, all right, and right now we're trading at par 97, all right. So here you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 up days in a row. I think they're going to try to make it 10 tomorrow, all right, because then that will be an even two weeks. So you, you run, you're, you're running up against a two-week run without any pullback whatsoever. But you still got this spike low. You can't ignore this right here. You still cannot ignore this right here. All right? At some point, just like a gap, this needs to be dealt with. The low of this bar, hold your breath, is 95.90. We're at 101 now. The bigger they are, the higher they go, the harder they fall. Coming up on a ramp, though, so it's tough to say what can happen. I know that they like to defend this dollar at every turn, every pull back here. All it did was touch the support. That's as far as they let it go. They turn the, the owl goes on and boom, it gets them running. So, where do we go from here? It's hard to say where we go from here. We have to look and see just how desperate the, the system is or the system is getting before we can understand where we're going to go from here. Right now, as long as this dollar stays strong, then you can expect the gold and silver prices to continue to get sold. All right, it's just that simple. Um, doesn't have to make sense. We just know that we have to trade what we see. So, looking at share prices now for the dollar, look at ticker symbol UUP, you get an idea here. Here we have gaps on the daily chart. Gaps that have to be dealt with, ladies and gentlemen. The first gap was here, okay? Everything goes back to that election. We gapped up, did not fill. All right. And then we gap up huge here. So we close on November the 11th at 2559 and then open on the 14th at 2583. All right. That's huge for this ticker symbol. All right. That's a big deal. And, you know shenanigans take place on the weekend sometime and you can see here that's what happened it's just not look back so at some point the gap is going to need to be filled and this is a huge gap here so we're looking at 
All right, so a pullback between 2580 and 2562. You got an air pocket there. So expect a pullback from there. And right now, we close the day at 26.10. So at some point, like I said, this gap is going to be reckoned and dealt with. When that happens, then you'll catch a bid in the gold and silver prices. Let's take a look at what's happening with silver real quick. All right, as you can see here with the silver, you got overhead resistance, which is inside of the Kumo cloud of death. Momentum is really pointing down on the daily chart. All right, so if you if you were just to look at the daily chart, you'd be like, man, this thing is dead. It's over. This is the beginning of a bear market, gaining momentum and downward strength, hitting new lows. And here we are here, this support here of 1662. Uh, then taken out today, hitting a low of 16.57 and a half. So we're hitting lower lows. Momentum's picking up. What do you do? Volume's picking up. What do you do? Right. But when you take a look at the weekly chart, you can see that we still got this ramp that is going to be reckoned with. So at some point. You're going to hit this, you know, as we go several weeks into the future. Boom, here's the ramp. So, can we go lower in the interim? Absolutely. How much lower can it go in the interim? Well, it, it can spike below this uh, this cloud. When you have thin layer clouds like this, it is not uncommon for prices to spike below that uh, temporarily, okay? It's just how it is. Do we have an example here? Do we have enough data to see one? not really but anyway thin layers like this spike downs not uncommon not at all uh, let's pull up the gold again real quick gold futures alright okay so same situation here it is um, again thin layer clouds prices can temporarily spike down and close down before uh, springing back up again and following the trajectory course so that's just kind of like where we are right now um, so how much floor can we go can it break 1200 and get to 1175 and temporarily even get down 1150 before rubber banding back up uh, yeah you can str the, the, the further down you stretch that elastic band the more power you're going to get on the on the upswing so just keep that in mind as well so two things to move gold and silver prices. The fact that you have gaps that need to be dealt with in the, um, in the dollar, that will help as that comes off. That will help the gold, or at least sustain the gold, from getting too low on, on the short-term basis. When and if you know the gap starts to get filled, we don't know when the gap will be filled. We just know the they have to be filled there they're, they're gonna get filled so that's where we are on that um, let's take a look at a couple of the mining shares real quick uh, actually let's not do this one yet what is it let me pull it up here I gotta find it bear with me just a second as we find this one so many ticker symbols is hard to keep them all straight uh, let's see. All right. Okay. Uh, this is one of these shares that I'm not that familiar with on a regular. Okay, here it is. All right, here it is. Alright, not coming in, so let's see what comes in under this one. Alright, I'm not able to pull it up here. Um let's see. It's ticker. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I'll have to do it do it as a system review. So I'll figure out how to do that. But it's ticker symbol BBIV, 
bbi.v and because it's foreign it's not coming up here in this one so I apologize for that so we'll move on I wanted to do it for you uh, for the person that posted that in the room I'll have to see if I can get a system output vid for that so hold on one second all right let's go with the uh, AG for now as you can see on the daily chart it's just moving around here it's really not doing too much trying to test resistance then it pulls back down again it's just flattening out leveling out here at this point so it's not a lot going on here uh, with this one uh, it's just moving around so let's take a look at now pretty Ricky alright okay pretty Ricky you can see it's being sold from coming up from that pop that resistance that seven dollar and two cent resistance now it's being sold uh, so far it's come all the way down to 675 um, so will we test the previous support low of 615 I don't know we'll have to see it like I said it all depends and determines what happens with the GDXJ uh, so let's look at GDXJ all right same kind of position you can see here we have a support low of 3280 and we've gotten as low as 3384 so far will it won't it who knows uh, but as it stands right now technically speaking it's in a position if we look at what we see here everything is negative everything is bearish on the daily chart below the Kumo cloud trend lines crossed and widening out momentum pointing down boom that's what you got if you were to re-examine looking at the weekly chart you can see we still got this nice ramp that we gotta deal with and contend with and we actually look green on the weekly chart we're still green even though it's running the, the lower part of that range and so far the market hit a high of 37.13 this week and a low of 32.80 all right, so you yeah, got about a five dollar trading range just about on coming up on there. So it's kind of this where we are right now, still in corrective mode. Momentum's coming off, but you're still trying to desperately hold on to an overall bullish position. You're just still in a corrective mode. So, how much further is it going to correct from here? Who knows? Um, all we can do is trade what we see and leave it at that uh, I would venture out to say though that so far it is looking like a almost a perfect Fibonacci retracement off the highs so we could be getting near support if we look at the ramp here so maybe we get as low as 30 somewhere between 30 and a half and 30 90 before it's done so that's another you know four dollars to the downside from where we close but only two dollars and eighty cents possibly more to the downside from the current low of 32.80 so I don't know that's just what it's looking like right here and again, this is just chart. I'm just looking at the charts, and that's it. But the charts don't tell you the whole story. The charts can't tell you what the algos are doing behind the scenes. That's what the charts can't tell you. So it's limited data when you're just looking at the chart. That's what the pulse waves are for. They come in and tell you what's what. So you know, take it, take it from me. You, you're gonna, you're gonna want to know what the algorithms are doing so you can trade along with them and smash the algorithms okay that's what we do at the at the black ops uh, trading room so anyway remember bulls make money bears make money and pigs get slaughtered so remember to take what you can give nothing back and I will see you over at black ops trading room by way of the pulsewavetrading.com again the website is pulsewavetrading.com uh, soon we're going to have registration for the upcoming um, academy 
and right now my target date to start the academy is December the 1st so if you have not uh, you know registered by then uh, you will miss it out you will miss out on that so if anyone who's interested in coming to the Academy you know hit me up and come on over to postwavetrading.com drop me a line and we'll get you signed up so that you can learn how to navigate these markets and also be prepared for what's coming up so anyway that's all I got peace